Hey Jamrin developers, this is Jamrin guys. So 12th tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a beautiful bottom of navigation bar as like this. It will be a full tutorial regarding bottom of navigation bar. When I click my camera event, then I'll be redirected to next page. When I click on navigation, then I'll be redirected to next page. So without wasting our time, let's start our project to file new and then select project. Here I'll select a cross platform app as we are creating cross platform app development and click on blank app and I'll be selecting a shared project as I'm using Xamarin Lab Player for broadcasting my iOS project. Here we'll be talking about main project, not other project that are targeting Android as well as iOS. So I'll be minimizing them. Inside our app.jml we have two parts there, jml as well as .cs part. Inside our jml.cs part, here we are initializing main page as my starting page and main page is a content page holder where we hold main page to start from. That's all for code behind for main page. Now let's go to design part of our main page. Now replace the content of the content page dot padding tag with on platform tags. Content page dot padding. If I close then I'll get my closing tag. Now, keep in mind that on platform is a generic class. You need to specify the generic type argument in this case on platform type argument. In this case, thickness, which is the type of padding property. Fortunately, there's a XAML attribute specifically for use with generic argument called X type arguments. The padding on the content page is set to 20 units on the top, but that's only to avoid overlapping the status bar on the iPhone. So I'll copy and paste that code over here so that I can reduce some more time. Here, padding isn't required on Android and Windows phone. Fortunately, there's a way to embed some platform specific markup in a XAML file using a class named on platform. This is a generic class that has three properties named iOS, Android and Windows phone. The on platform class also defines an implicit cast to of itself of type that returns the appropriate object depending on which platform it's running on. Now inside our content page dot content. Theoretically app developers can specify grid unit type value for the column definition height property in XAML. This is typically done inside tag for the grid rows definition column properties. The following example demonstrates setting three rows height to each of the three valid grid unit type values. Practically you need to understand that here I'll be using two grid rows and I'll be placing that grid rows with height 50 and star here star represent infinite condition for our images as well as placeholders and for our first grid rows, I'll be using three columns and dividing into auto, star and auto and star is for our images so that it can have images of its own respected size. Then I'll bind all those columns inside a grid and place one stack layout inside that grid so that I can have images respected with their tab gestures. Inside my stack layout, here I have done some mistakes on line 34, 43 and 44. Please kindly change that values. And inside my grid here, I have to change that values. Now let's talk about stack layout. Here I have divided my grid rows into three part as grid dot column as 0, 1 and 2. And I'll be placing that images inside my resources drawable folder of both android as well as ios project now talking about my tab gesture recognizer it recognizes when my icon one is tabbed when my icon one is tabbed then tab gesture recognizes that my tab event is icon one then it calls an event handler in my dot cs part now i'll create an event handler in order to save my time, I will copy and paste. I request you to hard code it. In order to create a new page so that we can get navigated, right click on project, add new project, form, content page and give it a name as page 1 and click on add. Now inside my page 1, I will design some images so that we can get navigated. 
I will be placing that as fill and giving a source as now I'll drag and drop all my required images I'll select that all I'll select it all and then paste inside my drawable folder and click on as then I have to wait for little time inside my iOS resource folder here I'll be opening my iOS resource folder I'll be dragging and dropping all those required images inside my iOS project and for all those icon I'll be giving that link in the description below don't forget to check it out Here placeholder should be inside double quotes. I have done some mistake over there. I'll change that later. For my stack layout, image source as something.png. Here you can use your own.png. I have downloaded it from a uh, web page. And for icon images, I have downloaded it from Android Asset Studio. As camera as I have downloaded it from here. So now I'll be creating a second stack layout with grid column as 2 and placing that to center and vertical option as center and image source as send.png. Here I'll be using set.png and giving a white request of 24 and margin of 10. And for different images, I'll be placing different content page holders and then I'll be placing that content page holders tab gesture recognizer and giving that tab event on new pages now tab gesture recognizer will recognize different tab events for different icon images now let's create new page for my second event handler as page 2 I'll click on add then inside my icon to tab page stack layout here I'll be giving a label background as the respected color and giving a fill and expand and then vertical option as fill and create row as 1, height request as 2 and column span as 3. Here I'm doing this because in order to place that icon inside that grid column in an exact position in both Android as well as iOS. And I will be changing that to page 2. Now let's code for our page 2 giving our image aspect as aspect field. And I will change that source code so that we can have some difference as pp2. You can give any images inside your resources folder. Here I have pp0. I have to change it to pp0. We have to place that placeholder inside double quotes. Now let's run our program whether it gets compiled or not. Okay, we got some error. Let's check where is the error. Okay, we got it. It should be row definition and given a height of 42 and 2. Let's compile and run. Okay, we got our expected output. Let's check whether it gets selected or not. Okay. That's all for Android. Now let's check it for iOS whether it gets compiled or not and give me same look and feel as my Android. Now let's run our iOS project whether it gets compiled over Live Player or not. I'm reflecting using Reflector 2 and I'm using my physical device. Let's be connected. Okay, we got connected. Okay, we got our expected output. Let's check whether it gives me a correct output or not. Let's select it. Okay, we got our expected output.